shut up compressor. All right, it is time for one more round of super intensive masking. This time so that we can go ahead and isolate and repair the tail fillet and the bracing plate back here where it kind of installs against the fuselage and the tail. Now, this originally fucked up, um, A, in my masking, <laughs> just because I masked it off, painted it first and masked it off to paint the rest of it, and it was kind of wonky down here at the dividing line. Then, when I was painting the insignias, my dumbass sprayed white and got a bit of a mist onto this side, and uh, then I sealed it with a clear for some stupid reason. And, but yeah, it's been needing repair ever since. Uh, so then when I was doing touch-ups, I said, screw it. We're going to retouch the whole thing. Sprayed onto it a little bit with the blue. So now it definitely needs it. That's fine. I think that it will honestly work better being isolation masked on its own and kind of given its own treatment. So I am going to mask it off and spare you all the pain of watching me do that and swear to crane flies. And we will pop back in here when it is good to go. Okay, so here we have the initial masking. This is just sort of the lining of exactly where we need the tape to go along the fillet. So obviously you got the fillet edge here. You got the bracing plate that extends out to the fuselage and sort of the, I guess the wing roots of the stabilizers up along the tail here. And up here I've got a piece of vinyl with a, you know, it's a nice little donut basically with a little hole in it that fits the forward shape of the fillet right there. Now, it's getting late and I'm trying to get a little bit more sleep than usual because of all the uh, coronavirus stuff going around. So I'm going to come back to this tomorrow and do some, you know, broader masking out around this so that we're not overspraying anything. And then we will get to the fun part of making this look nice and awesome. Okay, so it's a new night, and I was looking forward to really getting into the fillet tonight, but it's fucking raining, which means we're not going to be spraying anything that needs to be super shiny and all that kind of stuff. So, fuck. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is finish taping all this stuff so that we get the, the mask kind of more spread around and we're not going to be dealing with overspray, and also get in here and start doing some of the cleanup. Like, there's a little spot in here where something pooled or something. I think it was when I was uh, removing the, the white overspray on this side with the Q-tip and something happened. But yeah, basically do a little bit of smoothing, cleaning up there, getting this thing to the point where it's literally ready to paint the second that the rain goes away, which I think at this point looks like uh, not tomorrow, but the day after. Yeah, and uh, then working on a bunch of small shit too. So I'm gonna slide this over here for the time being. And let's get to the gear bays, or sorry, the gear bay doors, because they need to be sort of painted at the same time on the other side that the fillet needs to be touched up. Now, I applied a all-clad wash to these as well, and it got a bit out of hand, I think. So we need to kind of deal with that a little bit. And one of the ways to do that, uh, thanks to a nice helpful tip from well, Pattison is when the wash gets on a little bit too heavy or in areas you don't necessarily want. So a good example would be these inner doors here, like right there, I don't really want all that. Um, there's a little bit of pooling sort of here, etc. A great way to dial that back is just to spray on a little bit more. So it's kind of like Instead of it just being a wash, we can treat it like a pre-shading wash, sort of, maybe. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And if this doesn't work, no big deal. It's your base. Nobody cares about what the bottom of the plane looks like anyway. All right. So let's give this a shot. Let's see, I would say tailwheel doors. We'll start there because. People don't care about those. 
the way they sit, it's very hard to see them anyway. Indeed, that does kind of pull it back just a little bit. A little bit more on the... Look at that. Makes him a bit sane again. Okay, get that front edge just a little bit. Not too bad. Okay, so let's clean out the airbrush and do some other fun things. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the wheels, or actually the tires. Now, these have been painted with uh, Tamiya LP11 for the hubs and some Vallejo something or other, dark rubber I think, for the outside portion for the actual tires. But if you ever look at pictures of jug tires from World War II, they are rarely, if ever, just sort of a uniform dark grayish black kind of color. Um, they tend to have banding on them around the sidewalls. They tend to have different colored contact patches because they're going over, you know, they're actually running over shit with the contact patch. The sidewall doesn't hit, things like that. So I am mixing up some NATO black and some sand gray, which is MRP212. I believe it's uh, RAL7027, so sand gelb, basically. And this makes a sort of nice black brownie type substance. And we're just going to very lightly hit the contact patch with this stuff. I've also added some Mr. Rapid Thinner to make sure that we don't get any spidering or weird spatters, especially if we're going to be spraying really small with this stuff. I'm just going to add a bit more sand gray into this. And yeah, what the fuck, let's do it, right? Because right now it's maybe a little bit too, uh, too subtle for school and maybe a little bit too dark shit brown color. <laughs> All right. Clear out the darker color first. Part of the reason this looks a little bit darker, even though I don't think it actually is, is because it's got uh, the MRP satin thing going on. 
whereas the Vallejo, while it's not dead flat, is a hell of a lot closer to dead flat than this stuff. This is where it starts to get interesting now. Now I'm going to move that stuff aside. Go straight to some sand gray. Now there are two things I love um, to try to pull off with an airbrush. <laughs> and by love I mean hate. And that is super thin lines and super thin lines around a curve. And one common feature of wear patterns on jugs is exactly that, sort of a light line, four, five, six, seven, sort of a lighter line at the very edge of the sidewall, basically where the contact patch changes. You get sort of, I'm guessing it's dust or dirt buildup that that basically just sort of essentially cakes along that boundary. And I'm going to try to replicate that. My favorite law of airbrushing is what works fine on the, uh, on the test spray that you do <laughs> then doesn't work when you go to actually spray it. It's not perfect, but it's something. Getting to a point where I think once the oils come into play, everything will work out just great. Okay, so we're finally in a state of enough not rain that I can actually get on with the tail fillet. Now, because it's only kind of fucked up, we don't really have to go back and repair every single thing about it. Thank God. What we do have to do is kind of break up the pattern where it's been repaired. Give it a little bit of randomness. Unfortunately, this is a place where uh, I don't think the random pattern stencils can really get in and help because it's too many edges in here and all that stuff. So this is gonna be kind of freehand sort of modeling it up a little bit. And I think I wanna go a bit purer with the front fillet and then we can make the, uh, make the mounting bracing plate thing a bit more beaten up so
where this uh, vertigo stand is pretty cool for the most part, but turning it around is such a pain in the ass because of these little uh, grippers on the bottom of it, which are usually super useful. But when you need to spin it around, oh my god. All right. That's literally all we're doing there. It's all the black. All right, so before I gloss the tail fillet, I want to set up a two birds with one stone situation and deal with the gear bay doors. Now, if you recall when I did the underside of the jug, I put several sort of very dark gray modeling things on there. And honestly, they, aside from a couple areas, they didn't really show up all that well. So this time around, in the interest of a bit more contrast that will hopefully show through, we're going to be using ocean gray instead of a darker gray. First, I gotta clean out the airbrush just a little bit. Oh shit, I already did that. Awesome. Now, because these aren't weird edges and corners and stuff where we can't fit a stencil in there, we can actually bring one to bear. So, we're gonna be using this in conjunction with the ocean gray, doing what we can to uh, give a bit of a contrast boost to the modeling, then we're gonna put down. All right. <sighs> Now we can start doing the gloss, because I think we're in a pretty good place on these. Okay, we've got X100 loaded up in the airbrush. I'll let that do its thing for a little while. This stuff always makes me feel uncomfortable. It's like it sprays, but ugh. sit for quite a while. Okay, so the X100's had a bit of time to set up. Uh, not quite as great as I was hoping it would be, but whatever. So now we're gonna go ahead and hit it with some K-Colors 15 aluminum. Sweet, it looks like it is giving us a uh, a little bit of a beat up finish there. Yeesh. I don't know, it looks like that. You go up there and it looks like that. <laughs> All right, maybe they need a bit more. Okay. I think that's in a pretty good place. Okay. I think that's looking pretty solid. Time for a little bit of uh, semi-gloss, and then we're going to call it a night. For this, we're using K-Colors XW60 again. It's a good job of sort of taming the uh, brightness of the bare metal a little bit without taking too much away from it. Okay. those. Hmm. 
That's a weird reaction I'm getting here. All right. A bit of cleaner in the airbrush. Let me clean it out and then we will do the uh, always popular unmasking reveal. Okay, it is unmasking time. This azu tape is great stuff, but it can be a uh, little bit interesting to get up. Yay. When you don't get to hide in the uh, in the antenna hole. There we go. Get off my damn tweezers. And finally, there we have it, tail fillet. Cool. All right. And it is late as shit here and Honestly, it doesn't matter because we are in the uh, coronavirus apocalypse and time is a flat circle. And I have no real reason to get up tomorrow morning. Uh, no workout, no kids stuff, nothing like that. So I don't need to go to bed, but it's late as shit and I probably should. So we will uh, pick this up tomorrow.